And we're on. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very, very first episode of the Frida Podcast, a name that we dabbled on for quite a bit. How's it going, everyone? Uh, these are my friends, uh, Animal, a.k.a. Squazzle, and Matt, a.k.a. Freakish Alloy. Yo. Uh, my name is Cryon, aka a- Victor, or Victor aka Cryon. And, uh, let's talk about some games, some stuff that's been going let's on do it. in this, uh, in this, uh, past year. 2015 is ahead of us. We're, uh, just into almost half of quarter one. Uh, and, uh, yeah, what do you guys, what do you, why don't you guys say a few things about yourselves and, then we'll move on and talk a little bit more about the topics. So, Annabelle, why don't you start okay, first? Okay, how's it going, everyone? Uh, my name's Annabelle. You pronounce it like Hannibal, but without the H. Oh, or you can call me Squazzle. Uh, I'm 21, and I guess I am studying science and film and motion pictures. And I'm Matt, uh, a.k.a. Freakish Alloy or Freakish. Um, I'm 20, and I'm studying marketing. And uh, I'm pretty into gaming my whole life, so I know a little bit about it. Just a little bit. Un poquito. And those of you that follow the channel know me. Uh, 19, also starting, well, well, studying management studies and marketing. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've been doing YouTube since 2009. Uh, well into, well, following uh gaming and uh yeah pretty much pretty much we uh we all love games we like to talk about games and uh after a while we kind of decided to maybe sit down and record some of the conversations we get because uh we end up getting into some pretty pretty deep conversations about video games and how things are how things should be what how we well potentially how they were in the past compared to in comparison to now so um yeah, right now, lately, we've all been playing uh, a lot of uh, H1Z1, right? Yes. Kind of a yeah. big thing going on right now. Yeah, many hours have been uh, put into that game. <laughs> uh, we've all, we actually all uh, hang out on the, uh, well, on Das Medi's channel. Those of you who don't know, know it, uh, I'll put a link down in the description to check it out. Uh, that's pretty much where we all met, and uh, we've been playing a lot of games there. We frequently play there. Um, and uh, H1Z1 has been kind of the, the latest kind of community game that we've been playing, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, what do you guys think? So, things have changed a lot and since uh, that game came out because nobody talks about uh, DayZ anymore. It's kind of weird. Yeah, that game... Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, uh, DayZ is kind of fucked now that H1Z1's in there because H1Z1 comes out early access and it's already more functional than Daisy's ever been. To date, and Daisy's been out for like a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> longer, exactly. So, yeah, uh, when this game was being talked about, I wanted to mention this uh, last night, but I was like, no, I'm going to save it for the podcast. Um, I remember watching all the uh, previews that they had on Twitch, all the lives, the live streams, and from watching that, I remember thinking like this game doesn't really have that much stuff, and like the animations were crap and all of this stuff. I, I thought it was going to be a bad game, but going into the game, I was amazed. Yeah, kind of the same with me. I honestly, because you know when you hear like free to play game, and when you especially I don't know like SOE, I like Planet Side. But you could definitely feel that Planet Side was very heavily monetized. Like, there was, like, everywhere there was a whole, like, um, buy the membership stuff. I don't know if you guys played that much of Planet Side. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. But it was very heavily monetized. And, you, and I feel, I, from what I've heard, it's become even more so. Um, and generally, free-to-play games, zombie survival, microtransactions don't work that well with games like that. So that was kind of my first... Uh, Kind of sense. Uh, that's kind of what I first thought about it when I when I heard about H one Z one. Yeah, early access for me was the big uh, this game's gonna suck kind of thing because early access <laughs> never ever almost never works, and the people who make early access games almost always just give up on the game and just take the money. So. Yeah, it's actually good that you bring up early access. That's one of the things we're gonna talk about. Um, but let's talk a little bit actually more about uh, H1Z1. I guess then we can start talking about kind of the pluses and minuses of early access since that is a pretty... I would definitely say if I had to encompass 2014, that early access is one of the 
big controversial things about 2014. Wouldn't you guys say so? In my opinion, I'd say it's the worst thing to happen to games. Yeah, <laughs> it's also, I also agree with that. I think <laughs> yeah. it just has the opportunity to ruin the entire gaming industry. Yeah, as exactly. a whole. Well, it started off. I, mean, I think, yeah, definitely in 2014, it was it most most of the stuff that we heard about early access were negative. Like, things like Stomping Lands, and then there was, like, the whole thing with Miscreated, where they took it off Steam, and it's just, like, kind of turned into a ripoff. I think people started kind of um, uh, finding ways around it, how to exploit that whole system. But I do think that, I don't know if you guys remember, back in 2012 and 13, late 2012, early 2013, Early Access kind of had a... It kind of had, like, noble origins with the whole Kickstarter thing. That's kind of how it all started, and then it spread to Steam and everything else. I think it was kind of positive at first, but now it's not. I mean, there was like there have been good things that have come out of it. It was here and there. Yeah, it was a new thing, and I mean, it was good as far as like having having the community um, have a say in what's going to be in the game in the future. But the it was more of the developer the developers' fault. Yeah, the like the reason the developers. Yeah, early, Developers ended up taking advantage, or a lot of developers ended up taking advantage of the idea. Because on paper, it sounds really cool. Like, you help fund the game, and then you like feel like you're a part of the game completely because you see the whole process of it being fully developed. But then there's so many games that have come out, and then they just stop. They take all the money, and then they just stop creating anything. But I mean, there has been really good games that have come out, like... I've heard some pretty good things about Stranded Deep, and then there's Besieged, and like I Am Bread is funny and a good game. So there's been some good stuff that have come out of yeah, early and access. And most of those are uh, crowdfunded, aren't they? Uh, probably. Mm. I'm not sure. So uh, I think so. I think so. And then, of course, say I said. Say a couple of names, actually. Of what? Besieged. I am bred. So besieged. Besieged was, I think, community funded. I am bred was as well. And then what else did you uh, say? Well, there's Lisa too, and Lisa was a Kickstarter game, and that game's good. Yeah. Kickstarter. Yeah. So pretty much all of them. Yeah. Right. That's. I mean, that's the um, whole purpose the th- of early access, though, is for them to be crowd crowdfunded. No, no, no. Because I. Like, well, I think what he meant though is that some games they already start development, and just for the final stages, they generally. Yeah. Um, make it then on early. They put it on early access. Then is that kind of what you meant, Squazzle? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think all these games started from the very like before from the concept of the game, from the inception of the idea well, for, of the of the games. It kind of started off with crowdfunding. Uh, unlike unlike H one Z one, which I think H one Z one was already like they kind of had the engine. They kind of uh, had developed some basic things and. Now they're kind of just using. Well, they're now at this point they're kind of yeah crowdfunding, but they already had kind of a base game. Yeah, they had a foundation uh, to start from. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I do think that there's still hope for early access. I wouldn't completely. Um, I wouldn't completely like throw away the idea of early access and say that it's negative. Uh, it's just I just think that. It works better for smaller projects like indie games like Shovel Knight and all these like Besieged. These generally smaller games work better with early access. I think that as soon as you start dipping into the whole MMO genre with things like Horror Survival, I think that's where it gets its bad reputation because it's such a huge project that at that point money doesn't have much of an effect. It's it's just a matter of development time and... Uh, you have these huge teams working on these on these games that are supposed to be vast and and they are ha- supposed to have like endless uh, amounts of content or well replayability of content uh that's where i think it kind of gets a bit more problematic i don't know if you guys agree but it's the horror survival genre i think that kind of ruins early access not necessarily those smaller indie games well and that's why uh, like h1z1 is setting the tone for every other horror survival game like every any horror horror survival game that comes out from now on should be like just as good, if not better, than what H one Z one was like when it first got released. Otherwise, no one's gonna buy it. I don't think. I mean, they might buy it because yeah. of the hype factor, but there, that only takes you so far. Yeah. So. Hmm. Wouldn't it be kind of funny if? Uh, <laughs> wouldn't it be kind of funny if, like, a year from now? All of a sudden, we start getting. Uh, I mean, we didn't really. I mean, yeah, I guess we. There hasn't been like a Daisy 
or like that type of, type of term, like a Daisy clone at this at this point. But I'm thinking that in the next <clears throat> year, uh, there might be something like an H1Z1 clone that 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 might turn into like a thing, like kind of like WoW clones and then League of Legends clones or Dota clones. I should I should say, but rather I say League of Legends clones because a lot of those games are more clo- are closer to the format that League of Legends kind of adopted when it started. So I have this feeling if this is a successful big thing, because it's still really early. What it came on like three weeks out, ago. What three weeks? Three weeks ago. Think about how weird it would be talking again in in a year, uh, having all these like different H one Z one clones coming out. That's what people are gonna call them. They, they, even if they're they're innovating in some way, people are gonna call them H one Z one clones or something like that. Yeah. And uh, um, I'm not sure. I didn't they say they were gonna close the early access. And then just release the game afterwards, or how is that going to work out? Because I have yeah, no idea. Honestly. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we could. I look know, it up. like, it's twenty dollars right now for the early access, and that's yeah. like the alpha version or whatever. And uh, clearly, if you pay the twenty dollars, it's worth it because there's a lot of gameplay you can do. Like, after playing it last night, since all the patches, I want to play it again. Yeah. Um. But like. It, like when it, when it gets fully released, which won't be for a while, I don't think. Yeah, that's what it'll I'm be thinking. free to play. So um, I have this feeling. It's kind of what I've been observing with a lot of these games is they generally have early access, right? The the sort of founder system, and then once the game launches, it goes to free to play, so you can play it for free. Uh, but they they basically changed the name of founder packages and they renamed them to starter packages and so I have this feeling that what we have now is the cl- the, the the founder pack essentially would turn into a starter pack so they haven't told us like if we're getting any exclusive items but think about some way down the line where they announce oh and everybody now that that, that it was in the closed beta the early access they're gonna get uh, these like permanent items account uh cosme- cosmetics or whatever and then when they make st- uh, the start the starter packages it's probably going to be very like variations of those, I- of those items so imagine like we get a pink hat or something like people are just going to then have like an orange hat or something like that like a lower tier of <clears throat> yeah, hat. yeah like a cosmetic Basically, we're going to have something that's yeah and that's going to be permanent most likely so or maybe they rotate Hopefully. them every year or two where they yeah um i have that feeling that uh, have you guys uh most more specifically, have you tried out any of uh, Firefall? I have not, no. Mm. Mm. Firefall kind of did that thing where they had the founder packages and then they did the whole uh, early access thing. Um, but yeah, it was kind of a disaster though. The game itself is. <laughs> it, I was watching their. They have a podcast as well every week, and it's kind of a. Um, Kind of sad how the game. You see this game now being a shadow of its former self, and it's slowly losing population. I have this feeling that's gonna happen maybe with Daisy. I really don't want it to happen because at the same time, I it does have this sort of charm. I do think Daisy has its own charm. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't uh, carried over quite as well from Daisy mod to Daisy um, standalone, but I can. St- I still think I'm. I'm kind of gonna miss that. You know, the map, the whole feel of it. It's going to be sad if it goes away, honestly. Yeah, the map was iconic. Like, um, for those who've played it, you know, from Daisy Mod, it became a thing where uh, you spawn. I think the biggest experience was trying to find out where you are. And yeah, knowing that at this, in the state that the game is in, um, I don't think a lot of people will be returning to that map. No, no. Um when you brought that up, the whole um, think like the whole trying to figure out where you are, doesn't that kind of have you noticed that that kind of doesn't really exist in H one Z one because of the whole slash look thing? Like I never felt, I never really, I mean, I did have for the first ten minutes, like in any game, I had that whole where am I? But then it really, like, it was really quick to learn. Yeah, you learn where right. to move. Maybe it's you. Yeah, maybe because the map is really small, maybe that's why. Well, I mean, it's eight kilometers by eight kilometers, so it's not that big. But in the same sense, it's, it they let you figure out where you are in game very easily. Yeah. Through road signs and actual maps in game, or you can do the slash lock thing and go to a third party site and actually look at where you are exactly and which way you're facing. So yeah, it's 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 kind of casual in that sense, but it's like 
well, look, I want to play with my friends, and I'm not going to try to spend two hours trying to finally get to uh, see each other in this zombie apocalypse and then end up dying when you actually get to see each other. So, yeah, exactly. Because I mean, you and never think- really know what's going to happen. So, go ahead. Yeah, and um, how like the whole slash lock thing um, for people that bought the game in early access that use the third party websites, I'm more than positive that if they were to take that um, command off, people would still be able to find their way around, or even if they don't know their way around and they like use the third party program just by looking at the map, the road signs that they have in the game, it'll be pretty easy to find each other. Yeah. yeah. I, I do hope that they do something um, with h one Zone where they, they pump out, like, a couple of different maps that all have different, um, very different feels, like an Arctic map, a desert map. Do you think that's possible? Do you think that's actually going to happen anytime soon? Well, they're going to implement weather. That's just a matter of time when they Im- actually implement it. Like, when it first came out, they had the rain thing, but the rain looked awful. It was loud and annoying, and it looked like little white lines just streaking in front of your screen. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah, uh, I remember that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I want to see snow in the game. Like that's the only complaint I have for the game right now. I was like, they advertise the weather changing and the seasons changing so much when they were talking about stuff like that, and now it's not even. It's always just like dusk. So, wow. Yeah, and um, I don't know. As yeah, sorry, uh, I think right now, I don't know. They did advertise the weather, um, but I don't think it should be added. For early access, I feel like that should only be added um, once the game is out. Hmm. As far as right now, I like like as um, just the mechanics of the game. You know, making sure that there aren't any bugs, make, uh, getting rid of duping, getting rid of speed hacking, just the basic basic stuff to make the game playable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still think that the game is um, a little. It's a little clunky. Uh, I don't know. It's like there's like that horror survival clunkiness to it. You know what I mean? Like there's still something to it that I hope. I don't know if it's the engine itself. Like kind of like that's kind of what stopped Daisy from being a game that actually functions. Is that kind of clunkiness? Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I I hope they they actually fix that. Maybe they can update their engine and everything. And yeah, that was yeah. the biggest fault of that game was not being. As I guess as uh, fluid, so everything was um, you had to do so much stuff just to do one thing. If that makes any sense. Well, that too, and the fact that they just didn't produce. They'd come out with a patch, and then they'd break some other aspect of the game every single time. <laughs> like <laughs> they try to make the game less clunky, but in the same sense, as soon as they patched it, it became more clunky. So yeah. Hmm. So, uh, you guys seeing right now, uh, he might join us, actually, Matt, a little bit late, but he can join us. Let me see if, uh, do you know if on Skype people can just join in? Yeah, they can. Um, uh, so I don't need to, add, like, actually, oh, oh, there he is. Can you hear us? Hello? Oh, God. I can hear you. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Can you hear? Yeah, we can oh. hear you. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. There we go. All right. Oh, well, everybody, the, this is Vodalicious. Hi. Matt, a.k.a. Vodalicious. Hi there. We have two Matts now. This is going to be so confusing oh, with oh. two Matts. Oh, Just call no. me freakish. There you go. That solves it. <laughs> so why don't you introduce yourself, dude? I mean, people that watch the channel know who you are, kind of, but just for the sake of... Because uh, Annabelle and uh, Freakish have no idea who you are. I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy. I make bad YouTube videos every once in a while. That's about, that's about <laughs> there all there is. is. <laughs> that bio. So, how you been? Okay. Okay. Oh, God. A very, very, very uh, early morning for me. I was 90% crying, can go fuck himself. But then the 10% won over. So, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, dude, we're just in the middle of talking about H1Z1 and early access. Do you, do you want to jump in and uh, I'll, what you I'll think? keep my negativity. This is so awkward. I'll keep my negativity <laughs> in for a little while. You guys can keep talking. 
Oh, when you God. want me to shit on something, just just just, just call press just, the just hit the button. Press the Vodalicious yeah. button whenever yeah. there's like something that needs to get shat on. You need that to happen. Just, just let me know, and I'll I'll play my role. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> this is so awkward. <laughs> Dude, so, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, all right, all right, I, I am tempted now, since you said it, what do you think of H1Z1? Oh, I just think that whole Daisy thing is just ridiculous, I don't know, I see so many people playing it, and I just can't imagine why. What do you, dis- what do you dislike most about it? It's just, it, it's, I guess it's, it's cool, it's more of like, a make your own fun kind of a thing like it was it's never something anybody would ever play like by themselves i hear most people talk about all the experiences and oh it's so cool because this happened they're like no that was just kind of a weird happenstance that you you kind of put more thought into than it really was you know i don't know it's just i don't think there's much of an actual game there i think most people just I see. I mean, I yeah. see what you mean. Yeah. I do see what you mean. Um, Freakish and and Annabel, they kind of also have. Uh, I guess. I mean, you guys. It's safe to say you guys have kind of grown up in the last two years around the the Bean Band community and like Twitch. So you guys follow the, those games a lot. So you guys, I'd say, yeah, probably would would agree that those games, because of the community, make more special moments. But if you play them on your own. Yeah, it's not that it's not that great. Right? It's um, I've been uh, following Daisy since the mod when it started a little bit before it started getting popular. But that game went from being able to play by yourself with a group of friends to only being able to make, I guess, content for YouTube. It wasn't it became mm-hmm. a game where you couldn't. It wasn't a survival game anymore. It was just kind of a log on, you know, and let's see what happens. Oh, I think all these games, don't you kind of think, though, that they've all turned into... They've kind of all gotten the Minecraft syndrome at this point, only with Twitch. What's the Minecraft syndrome? The Minecraft syndrome is, like, basically, like, it starts off as this game that's uh, all about, uh, you know, like, survival and, like, playing offline with... You know... It, it, it turns into a game kind of like Annabelle said it. I don't know what other way you could really put that into words, but basically a game that turns into a something that's all about making YouTube content. and, and You know what I mean? Like the, It's basically, it turns into... A game about experiences rather than, I guess... Skill yeah. and, and like... Yeah. Rather than like well, what a survival is supposed to be. Yeah. Well, I mean... I'd definitely agree with that. I think that's kind of, that's maybe a little off-putting. Uh, in, that's kind of maybe one of the new the off-putting things about the genre because it's like it's not that new anymore, right? Like it's been around for a it's while. It's been around so. like, since Arma it's, it's almost so. it's almost one of those genres where it's like somebody it's it's become well the people we're gonna sell this to are just content creators and streamers, yeah. and everyone else can. <laughs> they yeah, can it's the they go-to want. genre. Yeah. Well, that actually. Puts us in a good segue for early access because if you think about it, hasn't early access also become that? Like, look at all these games: Goat Simulator. Uh, Goat Simulator actually was Bread. funny though. Like they did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, but like all these early access games have now turned into into content games. They're all about like content, something that you record. But if you play it by yourself, just because you want to play a fun game, you're most likely not going to play it more than once, right? Yeah, I can see that. So early access, I'd say, is just kind of turned into that. Maybe that's one of the negative things about it because it's well, really in turned same into same sense. It's just all every or the whole gaming industry as a whole. Well, well, yeah, because of early, I mean, early access has become so huge. I would say that it definitely affects the industry in general, right? Uh, well, yeah, but I'm saying like like it's not just early access then if. If they're doing it and they're so big, then that's going to be what the entire gaming industry turns into eventually. I feel like it's just well, shit for content, not nothing that's fun. Because I mean, if you think about it, it's it's free advertising. If if a streamer picks up your game and says it's good and he's popular, think about how much how good that is for your game. Yeah, yeah, like lyric, yeah. right? Where well, he like, plays pretty much. I mean, when he played uh, uh, Lisa, um, 
the, I'm pretty sure the developer told uh, many that he got like a boost in sales, and that's just because he played the game. Like, yeah, he didn't really even come forward and say that it was like a lot of fun. He said it's it's okay, and a lot of people played it and bought it just because of that. Yeah, yeah. So content is like the next. I mean, if your game has good content for streamers, then they'll sell more because streamers and yeah. YouTube people are the face of the gaming industry now. Like, I'm pretty sure that there was a picture I saw not too far or not too long ago when it was Dying Light, and it said it had a quote from PewDiePie saying, "This this game is great." It's like that he's not even wow. like a credible source. Well, I mean, technically he can't. He kind of is, but he's not like he's like IGN or anything. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not like he's a team of people that evaluate the right, game and yeah. look at the different aspects. Well, yeah, yeah. That's also because it's becoming like the people who actually do that. It's very shady and untrust trustworthy. Yeah, he's not even a reviewer. Yeah, that's I know not his but, job. He doesn't yeah. critique anything, and so that's what kind of makes it shitty for me. It's like I don't give, I don't care what PewDiePie says. Like, oh well, yeah, and but in the same sense, it's like. Well, IGN says this, but they could be paying, be, be getting paid royalties from them. True, true, but that certainly happens with like AAA games, right? More, more, more often than like uh, indie games, right? Yeah. Indie games, you generally don't, you don't really have like the devs paying. I haven't heard of that at least. I don't think they even have the resources to 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 pull off something like that, like bribing reviewers to review, like let's say something like Shovel Knight or whatever. Yeah. I think a perfect example is, uh, I think it was uh, Watch Dogs, was it? Where, yeah, yeah, I mean, everybody reviewed it and said it was a great game. But, I mean, once it came out, we all know yeah, how Watch that Dogs went. Yeah, Watch Dogs was such a yeah. shady thing. Because they like, they're like, oh, this game's great. They use PC graphics during the uh, E3 or whatever. And it's just like, when it comes out on next-gen consoles, it doesn't look nearly as good. And the attention to detail of that game was so poorly done that it was just so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot that game existed. It was just now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, isn't it, isn't it kind of like that, though? You forget about most AAA games so quick now. I think, I think 2014 is the worst year ever for Ubisoft. Yeah. I don't think... I think for gaming in Ubisoft, general, I think this is one of the yeah, worst years of gaming. I think... Like Ubisoft before this year was like a very trustworthy company, and they were produ- producing like very good content. And then they have Watch Dogs and uh, well, I don't know the about new that. Assassin's Creed. What? Well, I, I would say I Ubisoft. Know, Ubisoft has just been kind of slapping their name on whatever. Trials for Fusion long, was a for big like game. a long time. Yeah, but like I don't. I, I you said 2014 specifically. Yeah. I think this thing started way back in 2013, like 2012, end of 2012. I think that's kind of when they, a lot of AAA companies just uh, started going to shit. I think not even like 2014 is. I think the peak of it, right? The peak. And now I think if if you think of it like a crescendo. I do think it kind of starts off from 2012, 2013, it picks up. 2014 was definitely the worst. And now I think so far, 2015, there haven't been any, like, big, big releases. Uh, but so far, is it okay to say this is a good year? So far? For well, what? It's been a month. <laughs> it's only been it's a month. It's been a month, but, like, we have, what, H1Z1 now? That's, uh, that's not AAA at all. It's not AAA, but I mean for gaming in general. Oh, okay. H1Z1 isn't AAA. <laughs> it's SOE. That's I mean, the SOE, I would say is. if you compare something like that to, like, Dying Light, then no. Then no, it's not at all. It's an early access game I don't on think, Steam. I, I don't think any game that has early access can be really called a AAA title. No, not at all. And it just, I mean, the graphics are not great. The, it's clunky it's like mostly broken half the time like it's not triple a if you're paying for it in alpha and getting like that's not no No, i think triple a games are yeah something more like dying light or far triple a games are games that that get released and they're still broken (laughs) yeah (laughs) exactly That's pretty much what. Oh God, this is so. This is so disheartening. This whole conversation about 2014. Uh, I guess as much as I, w- I am negative about H1Z1, when I compare it to something like Dying Light, I have to still go. Oh, H1Z1 is better. 
because I hate that concept of you have to make all your own fun. But at the same time, in Dying Light, it's like you don't get to make any fun. Like, did you stick to our script and you do our stupid fetch missions and you climb towers and you do, you know? It's just that contrived, like, story bullshit. There's, there needs yeah. to be some kind of a happy medium between the two genres because I just can't stand either of them. Do you, uh, do you think that... All right, what's your favorite, though? Uh, you're not a big fan of survival games, but would if you had to choose... I mean, this might not. This might be a bad comparison, but like Minecraft over H one Z one. What would you say? What would you pick? For me, they're completely different. Like, yeah, yeah, those aren't. Yeah, you can't. Well, let's really say play. Minecraft survival versus H one Z one survival. You can't com- you, both are multiplayer. You really you can't uh, compare those. Uh, yeah, really. I mean, it's. I could see why you can make the comparison. I guess if you fought for it, but I don't know. Because at least when I play Minecraft, like what I generally do is I join like a server that's just survival and for me, I just kind of I just don't think the technology is is there yet to make that H one Z one fun yet, you know, mm-hmm. especially on a budget for like you know early access budget, you know. I think they need to have more resources available. They need to think of more ways to make it interesting, something more like. Persistent would be cool, which I guess H one Z one is. Like as opposed to Daisy, there's more uh, persistence in H one Z one. Yeah, well, but I think it's um, it's it's still in its infancy, and like there's so many of those games that have been just released back to back to back without much of a like forward movement. You know, it's kind of like the same thing, just everybody's interpretation of it. Yeah, and I think I think it's kind of that that scenario where it's like. You'll see a lot of interpretations of it until somebody just makes it really good, and then that's the one that's going to get popular. Kind of like a yeah. Warcraft scenario where it's like, oh, we have all these RPGs, and then we have Ultima, and then we have EverQuest, and then WoW came out, and it was exactly the same thing, just like done better. <laughs> yeah, and then that's the one that that's exactly out. what I'm thinking of. Actually, I guess it depends on the, um, I guess on the player, because what you said is basically the opposite of what I think, and uh, I mean. It's not going against you, but I guess it depends on the player because um, of the games that they like. Because I could say that, as far as for me, H1Z1 is probably my favorite game right now. Right now. Yeah, right now, yeah. But, but, I mean, I, I, that's that's fine. I'm not saying it's like... What I'm saying is that I'm sure that something is going to come along soon that's just going to take a dump on H1Z1. And then that's the thing that everyone... That's the one that's going to stick. Like, I think H1Z1 is a flash in the pan, like so many other games, because it's so popular to stream and do YouTube. And then people are going to get sick of it quick. And then somebody's going to come out with that zombie Daisy style. What if, what if they don't, though? What if they don't, though? What if, like, let's say it kind of... Like, look at how huge the pause between... DayZ and H1Z1 was uh, even just standalone. Oh, but there were so many. There were so many that came out, but they were all even worse. They were even worse than DayZ. Yeah. So if nothing that comes out better than H1Z1, because that's really the question of it, right? World of Warcraft became su- as successful as it is, as it is now because when that game came out, even if it was like overall kind of unfinished and kind of crappy. If, it was the if, uh, best thing available. I guess. It was the best thing available. So what happens if, if there is no, nothing that's better than H1Z1 that comes out in the next two years? And, yeah. and Then I think that would be disappointing for the genre. I think if, if nobody is willing to, to... If everybody just decides that this is the one they're sticking with, then I think that's going to hinder it because I don't think that they've taken it very far yet. You know? Yeah. Well, it, it, but, it came out three weeks ago and they've patched it so much. Like I have, I don't remember the last game, or if there was any other game that was so quick to react to what the fans want. Well, like, I can name it. It gets few, released. But... It gets released day one, and people say it's pay to win, so they tone that down. And then within the same week, they patch it so that like the E doesn't lag when you pick up shit, and they fix all this stuff. And then now they're completely redoing the like they're adding graphical uh, aspects to it as well, and it's just. Their reaction time is crazy. I'd say two games that kind of did that were... 
you guys are going to hate me for saying this as an example, but I do think that this is a game that, that changes and develops really quick, and they're very fast at responding. That's Warframe, one of them. And then the other, I'd say, is Planetside. Again, SOE. But Planetside uh, was pretty quick at the start. I remember there was like some conspiracy about, like again, it being way too pay-to-win, and then they changed it and turned it more into skins yeah. and stuff like that. So I would no, say... But SOE, I would say I think that SOE just, has a good rep for that type of stuff. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Cause... Warframe's not from SOE, by the way. That's different. That's digital yeah. extremes. But they're they're a, they pump out content really quick. I mean, I'm amazed by how much that game's changed in a year. Like, it has nothing yeah. to do right now with what it was uh, even a couple of months ago. <laughs> but then that's a, that's another situation where it's the game's not officially out yet, so it's hard to speculate on all these things. Exactly. Because yeah. where's the uh, H1C1 might be that game that it just continues to grow. People are into it now, and they just keep adding stuff. Maybe they will make those innovations that are going to make it next level, so to speak. But maybe they won't. You know, maybe people will get really bored of it. Yeah. Uh, I do. I I do have a bit of a, a bit of hope for H1C1, though. I mean. More than a bit of hope. That's that's what I should say. I I do think that people will. Mm, it's just like SOE. I mean, if they really mess this up, <clears throat> this is gonna be terrible for them. And I don't think they can even risk H one Z ones being developed by a much smaller team than um, EverQuest Next. And uh, as far as I know, the Planet Side team was much uh, bigger. So even if it's like a smaller team and it's more like an experiment for them, I don't know how they're really thinking of it, but. I do think that they can't. I don't. Just, I just don't see them messing this up. It could. I mean, I'm sure people would have said that back in 2011, before all this stuff started happening with, with other AAA companies so like Ubisoft and uh, EA. But now, I don't know. I don't think SOE is gonna mess it up. Honestly, I don't know. You, you guys, what do you think? I don't. Think I they're just gonna mess it up. Yeah, I don't think they're going to mess it up, but I just hope that it doesn't happen, you know, because you never know. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, the people who are making uh, H1Z1 understand the frustration that has come with the genre of horror survival because exactly. they've already made a game that's not clunky. So that's in itself is good. <laughs> so I don't yeah, think. Yeah, I, I think that they, especially being people, the SOE is like a very open uh, company that talks a lot with Twitch uh, lives, on Twitch especially. Um, I, even the Planetside community, they had like a very big community. And now with, you know, people like Arkselgar, right? That's how his name is pronounced, or Arkselgar? What's his name? How is his name pronounced? I have he's, no always idea. On, he's always on Lyrics live stream. But I think that they see why people hate. What's going on right now with, with with this genre? So that's why maybe they're gonna do something to not mess up in the same way, right? Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, Arc Legger? Arc Legger. Arc, Arc Legger. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. I, I. I don't know. I'm hoping for that. Anyway. Um. So, what are you looking forward to in? Uh, 2015 in general like games uh other than h1z1 right i think we talked enough about that game but what else do you guys really look forward to like especially uh i guess we can combine this with pax so freakish and i are going to pax we're going to be checking out some games there but other than that what i mean what what are you guys kind of looking forward to bloodborne yeah i love it's my from num- software it's my number one it's my number one right now it's bloodborne and then probably No Man's Sky, and then, uh... uh no Man's Sky, like, it's gonna be terrible. Let's just be straight about it. But I love the romantic idea that it's gonna be amazing. It's another <laughs> one of those games where the technology is just not available to make it anywhere near what's being advertised. It's one of those <laughs> things. I have this romantic idea that it's gonna be what it I is. I don't think, uh... But I don't think it will be. I'm interested to see how Evolve does. Oh, I like God. Uh, I give that. I like the graphics. <laughs> I don't think it'll do well, but that's going to be another thing where you're gonna be like, oh, I forgot that existed. It's just yeah, it's like Titanfall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh God, Squazzo, what about you? Um, in general, I guess games that we're gonna be able to go back and play and say, yeah, this is a good game. 
Because we haven't had many of those in the past two years, I would say. Right. Not including MOBAs or... Other than, like, Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is from software, which is who is making Bloodborne, so... It's yeah. from, I it's want from, something... from software, lol. <laughs> yeah, I want something that I could go... That I could actually stand up and go get a physical copy. You know, because, I mean, that was one of the biggest things back then, you know, is you go to Best Buy or you go to a video game store and you get a physical copy. And you go back and play those games, but we haven't had many of those. The only physical yeah. copy of a game I have is actually Dark Souls 2. And when I was pissed, not pissed necessarily, but I just had to laugh, I opened up the case. I got, like, the big collector's edition with the statue and everything, and I opened up my case to pull out my CD. And, like, it's a, it's a CD case. Like, there's indentations to put CDs in there, and then there was just a little paper slip with a Steam code on it. <laughs> <laughs> In case you ever do get like a CD of the game, put it in there. <laughs> yeah, no. maybe that's DLC. Maybe. I don't think also they going, exist. Going back to 2014, like Destiny was probably like the shittiest thing ever. Oh yeah, I don't yeah. know why people still. I don't. People still play that game, and I have no idea how you can play that game. It's grindy <laughs> and it's addictive. It's like Diablo. No, that's not, not. That's not. That's it's not, not grinding. It's, it's not. It's not. Let me let me stop you right there because I feel yeah, passionate it's not real about grinding. This. Because there's Diablo, <laughs> there's Path of Exile, there's something like Warframe, there's something like uh, Fantasy Star Online 2, where it's grindy as shit, but it's still fun. There's still you still feel like you're making progression. You feel like the gear matters. Like there's yeah, just so and then many Destiny, things. it's like you get to like whatever level it was, and then like you have to get better gear in order to level up. But when you level up, you don't get anything, but you have the better gear, and that's it. And you can get the better gear, not by finding it, but by having to grind resources, which has timers, which is bullshit. <laughs> and those like, missions, the story yeah. missions, and every like a lot of the other games can I mean, still even the have voice good story. Piss poor. Every it's single, like, every single mission, and like was Peter Dinklage going, "Okay, take me to this computer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, plug me into the computer. Oh, aliens are coming." <laughs> pulled off those aliens. We've okay, woken the hive. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I, I was, I was like, kind of making a joke because I was playing it, and uh, by like the second hour, that's all I had done. I put like eight hours into that game. I gave it a fair shot, and I was like, "Is this really happening right now? Every single <laughs> mission is this?" Uh, and it was. The PvP of that game was actually kind of fun. Is it though? I heard that it was very unbalanced. Is that true though, or is it actually? I wouldn't like, say it's unbalanced, but it yeah. gets old. It's does it doesn't get old. It gets old after a while. Yeah, um, I mean, it was fun. There's only it like, doesn't last. No, no, no. Uh, so Vatalicious, you play Diablo three still, right? Uh, every once in a vague time period. No, not really. No. Once in a blue moon. Not even that. I'll log in every once in a while because I'll see they'll make some cool changes, but uh, they kind of lost mm. me. They didn't That's, have all the this uh, new stuff. It's a good game now, but they kind of lost me. I was all gung ho for them, and they maybe I new think, expansion will get us back in. You never yeah, know. it'll get you back in it. Yeah. I think Diablo three was one, or the expansion for Diablo three was one of the best releases of 2014 because they took a game that was complete shit and they made it like. So good. They made it what it was supposed to be in the first place, and it like totally revived the game. And I thought that was pretty amazing. I still think Path of Exile just shits on it from every direction, and it's better in every I single way. I can't get way. into Path of Exile because I played too much Diablo two, and it's like the same thing. So much better. Thematically, I think Diablo <laughs> two is still better, but with just Path of Exile, the complexity and like the depth and how much like customization you can do is just so good. I'm I'm just gonna say that I'm too stupid to play Path of Exile. Like that game's way too fucking complex. I cannot think of those insane combos that people make. It is game. it is very complex. Like I'm not and gonna lie. I have is, a lot of characters who just can't. I can't play them anymore because I just ruined it. I have to wait lose for so like much a, XP. Well, like not lose the XP, but like I've built a character and it's just not viable past like level sixty, <laughs> and they just can't walk uh-huh. out into a zone or they just die immediately. So wow. I, I I think see the that turn-off. the thing they kind of always there was like something about the UI like I had the same problem with Arcage. I really liked how Arcage looked, the game itself, the graphics, 
the art style and everything, but the UI and just like the clunkiness. There was like this weird clunkiness again. Really, really made me angry. I don't know why, but the way that Guild Wars and the way that even more so World of Warcraft has um, their UI and just like the the smoothness of the animations and everything, mm -hmm. it yeah. really just like that. I am maybe 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 I'm just a peasant, but I do fall for stuff like that, and that really appeals to me. And like, I'd rather have a game that looks more like Torchlight, where it's more cartoony. But at the same time, it has that kind of polished out, clean UI, rather than something that's very nitty gritty, like very realistic but dark. Like I've seen so much of that that there was just something about that in Path of Exile that um, kind of got me bored. Because after a while, like all the caves look the same. I don't know. Yeah, the game like the first two acts are kind of just like really ugly and boring. And I couldn't get through those. Yeah, I basically yeah. like that's when I stopped. Kind of once you get to Act Three. It's like it's a whole nother game. Just so yeah, I saw that there's like jungles looking. and stuff, but I couldn't get to that stuff. I was yeah, I couldn't last that long. Uh, but yeah, 2015. So we got Bloodborne, we got No Man's Sky, which we're all. I think I am also looking forward to that, but I have a feeling it's going to suck just because I have no idea how this game is going to. That's what I'm saying. You know, I would love for it to be great. I'm excited to watch it not fail but i think that it will does anybody have why. faith for the division no <laughs> yeah i don't either no way <laughs> it's gonna be so casual it's probably you're gonna die and all your items are still gonna be on you when you respawn i bet i bet they're gonna do that unless it has the good pvp are great, but yeah i, like I mean the cinema the marketing behind the game isn't really good but <laughs> never trust. The other I, thing. I almost don't trust the game with that with, like if you have that much marketing yeah. No, well, that's exactly what they what did are, with Watch Dogs. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I why would they I like I understand like having commercials is important. We're both studying marketing. We know this stuff, but at the same time like you I feel like they put more money into these uh into these commercials and making these cool awesome cinematics than the actual game. Like okay, World of Warcraft I've always admired their cinematics. They're very cool. I can tell that they're very, very high quality. They also, mm -hmm. you know, in the U.S., you told me even, I remember, Matt, you told me that, like, two weeks before launch, like, it was all over, like, the TV. Yeah. Like, it was all on every single channel. That was, like, a World of Warcraft commercial. But it still, like, doesn't have, like, it has one good cinematic and one in-game uh, one in-game uh, trailer. And that's it. Whereas with a lot of other games now, you have like three different cinematics that come. It's like movies. Like they have three different cinematics coming out at three po different points in the year before launch, and then the actual game comes out, and it looks like uh, Mario sixty four. Yeah, I think they need to stop hyping things. Like as much as I love Dark Souls two, I was so mad when I got and installed the PC version. I was like, really? This is what you're giving me? This is what you're giving <laughs> me right now? All this time you've been showing me like what it's supposed to look like and how awesome yeah. it's going to be. It's more, yeah, it, it's basically like we're going to make this for the people so that they think they're getting this, we're going to get money, and it's going to be crap. Another remind, another thing that uh, kind of reminds me of this as well is uh, in terms of MMOs is uh, Elder Scrolls Online. Do you guys remember how many freaking game, like cinematics they made for that? And then the game came out, and it was the most... I even played it with uh, Lyric on stream. With Lyric and somebody else. Like, we were in a party of three going around questing. It was the most boring game ever that I've ever yeah. played. Boring. Like, everything was phased. So you never actually saw any players. It was just the three of us in this world that was kind of the dark. It was that whole, like, again, very realistic-looking darkness. You know what I mean? I'm just kind of tired of that. And then... I, Shades of Grey. Like then Wildstar came out, and that was like supposed to be, you know, having that very unique uh, art style that ages very slowly. Yeah. And yeah. that was that was too much though. Like that, I I just want a perfect balance. Why is it so hard to get a game that's perfectly balanced so it's not too cartoony? It's not it's not like like Wildstar. Like the proportions of the characters, like your arms were longer than your fucking legs. How does you know that what make? I think it's good. Uh, uh, Lords of the Lords of the Fallen. All right. Yeah. That was the perfect medium for me. Too bad they released like, it and it was broken for forever. Yeah, it's, it's a great game now. I'm talking visually. It's, yeah. That's the best looking game I think I've ever seen. Because it's got the like really 
cool, nitty gritty, dark. This is cool, but there's so much color in that game. I know it's kind of like Warhammer, actually. I really like the Warhammer art style. It reminds me of Warhammer, yeah, like exactly. the big armor pieces, the mm, big yeah. shoulders, the big like. I love that stuff. The hammers. It's kind of like Warhammer and Warcraft. I mean, I love that style and. I know that they're worried not to use it too much because then they're just going to get called Warhammer clones, but it worked with this, right? I mean, uh, I mean, it's very obvious. I think they wear their influences on their sleeve with with that, you know, so many things are basically just Warhammer in that game. But yeah. it works. It I, um, nice. I really th- uh, th- am looking forward to now speaking to Warhammer. I think sometime this year, Warhammer The Dark Crusade is coming out, the... Uh, beta or i'm scared to say early access because i don't know if they're actually gonna have early access oh but yeah I'd say, i think they already do they already do oh god so i, think I pretty much any any game you can rattle off they're pretty much allowing you to buy alpha access at this point god but i am that's looking just, forward to that thing. i want to see how good that's gonna be because it's supposed to be like planet side third person and i love third person shooters i love their it's such a it's mm-hmm. it's a genre that was so big for a while and then it kind of like stopped and it's not developed enough. Like I used to play yeah. S4 League. I've told you about that uh, game. Like now Warframe. I love those types of games, but they I feel like there aren't en- enough of those. There's so many um first person shooters. Yeah, there's so many first person shooters, but there aren't enough third person dynamic sort of like where you can jump on walls and like uh do backflips and like what Bl- Brink was supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. Brink was terrible. Oh God! The only one I can think of is Nosgoth right now. Nosgoth, exactly. Nosgoth. I like it, but it's kind of, it's still kind of like missing depth. I feel like it's there's not that much customization. Most of the yeah. weapons work the there same. Needs, there still needs to be way more to that game, but it's it's good. It's another one of those things that where, I don't know, we we kind of lost our early access topic without ever really talking too much about it. We got more into H one Z one. Yeah, we talked or, about it earlier. Okay, so I was just late to the party. Wait, but no, with early not... access, no, we were early access for me is is, I think, like you'll play a game in its early stages, and there's not enough there to to hook you, and then you, I don't know. For me, like I've played a lot of early access games, and then never went back. Or and you go back it. and you play a little bit of what they add and then you go back again, but eventually you just get bored of that because so, there's just mm-hmm. not enough content. I'd rather have them release a whole chunk of content than just like these little fractions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's kind of hard. It seems like it's very hard to talk about games this last year without talking about early access. That's all they are. Yeah, that was yeah. the biggest thing. Like, It's so hard to have a conversation about video games without actually talking. It's like, you know that there's like, that whole saying that uh, if you talk about um, uh, like any any sort of t- uh, conversation that starts from religion or politics, eventually uh, you, you you're going to mention Hitler and you're going to mention World War II. You always like get to that topic. You're always going to mention free to play or early access. Well, free to play not that much anymore though, because free to play has become so normal now that I feel like mm-hmm. everything is free to play, so people don't care that much. But remember when everybody was blowing up about free to play back in 2010, 2011? Yeah, bugged me. The only I think the only uh, really good company that does free to play well is Valve. I agree. Mm, I mean, because, that's, that's I mean, a big statement. I don't know. There's other companies. Oh, really? It's a big statement. What, there are so the many other others. Companies? Well, think, think look at Path reason... of Exile. Look at Path of Exile. That company has a really good free-to-play model. Yeah, they do it well. I think um, SOE does it well now. Yeah, SOE definitely right now. I'd say also... Um, Hmm. I'd say that uh, don't say don't say Warframe. I'll keep no, no, no. I'm not saying definitely. Not. <laughs> all right, all right. As much as I love Warframe, there's no way that's a good free to play model because they do give you a considerable advantage if you can like buy yourself weapons. But I would say things like um, uh, what's that game called? Um, Amazing World. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hold up, I have it on Steam. I'm pretty sure I have it on Steam. Let's look it up. Uh... Oh, God. So there's just not that many. There are yeah, companies that do free-to-play well. I just think they're generally, like, smaller companies. Um, yeah. 
Uh, I think NC Soft now maybe does. Uh, I mean, that's not really a free to play model, but um, that's I guess so, more to talk to with microtransactions. But Valve, I'd say, is probably one of the best. But there are others. But it's probably the most popular. Maybe that's the way. Yeah, to say that's it. what I was gonna say. The most because they have more money than God. <laughs> Smite did good. Smite, 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 smite. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, they have that. H1, uh, no, what's the name of the studios? That's what I was thinking about. High res studios. High res studios. I think they, oh, they have a good free to play model. Uh, yeah. Going back to early access, I'm scrolling through my Steam list of nearly 200 games. And uh, the only game that I think I bought last year that was actually done was Lords of the Fallen. And it could be argued that it wasn't. What about Shovel Knight? No, I didn't play that. Yeah, how about how about a game like uh, uh, Master Chief Collection? Like, <laughs> oh god, how much of a flop was that? <laughs> like, like they could have made so much money from that game, and, and I'm sure they did. But they could, yeah, and it's still broken. Like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. how much time do you need? Is it still broken? Yeah. Is it's it still, still broken? broken, yeah. What? I'm so glad I didn't buy an Xbox. That was one of the main reasons I was going to buy an Xbox One, that and Halo that was 5. A lot, yeah, that was but, the reason yeah. for a lot of people. And you look at the Halo 5 beta, and it looks like uh, Titanfall and Call of Duty. Like Put together, yeah. Yeah. All right, okay. So what about... Um, what about... I, we forgot to mention this earlier, but what about The Witcher? What do you guys... Like, do you guys think that's going to be like the t- game of 2015 that people look I back at? Kind of like the, the the Shadow of Mordor of 2015? 14? I think it's not going to be the anything special. No. Not, really? Not same. I think it's going to be... I wow. think it, it's going to have... Like, the world, I think, is so big that it's going to... There's... Kind of like the problem I had with, gonna be with really the Dragon small. Age, where it's just there's like so much to do that it just overwhelms yeah. you. It's like, yeah, we can make yeah. all this infinite, expansive stuff and all these dumb little quests and things for you to participate in, but then it just becomes way bogged down. It takes you hundreds of hours to do nothing, and then I almost prefer games that are more short and concise at this point. Like when I was younger, I, I have, I I have that, faith but. in the gaming community or the gaming industry anymore, and it's kind of sad. Like I just, Whoa. I just like stick to my game, my few games that I play, and that's yeah. it. I mean, isn't everybody like that now? Like they kind of like invest in one or two. Yeah, games it's more of a it. just kind of buy the game, test it out. If you don't like it, oh well. Yeah, like I don't remember. Uh, if, I don't. I think the last game that I bought that was like a full price game was probably uh, Shadows of Mordor. Same, same, I'd say. That's the big AAA. That's the last AAA that I bought. You guys much. really did like that game, uh, huh? I yeah, loved it. I loved that I game. It, I, just, I didn't like I the ending. I completely thought it was trash. I was really? like, oh, God, another bullshit fucking Assassin's Creed Arkham thing. It's like, I don't know. It just falls into that same... Yeah, just, it oh, does, man. but the way that it's done is is kind of a twist on the genre. I liked it because... I See, okay... I will say that I liked it maybe because I did not play that much of Batman. I also did not play that much of Assassin's Creed. So for me, this was a game that was kind of, I guess you'd say, new. Because I haven't, like, played all... I've, I've been playing... I actually still have it installed, but I haven't gotten to actually finishing it. I played a little bit of Batman Ar- Arkham Asylum. And I played the first Assassin's Creed way back when it came out. So for me, this was really kind of a fresh thing. As much as I understand that it's not at all. Yeah. I don't know. Freakish, are you kind of in the same position? Like, have you? Played yeah, I played. Other, I played like, like all the Assassin's Creeds besides like the newer ones. Yeah, and I, just, I, I, I mean, just, I thought it was a good, a great game because I mean, the the Nemesis system thing was cool. Like, like can you name something any, like can that's you name never been done like else? that? Can you name anything? I like the graphics and I like the atmosphere and the main character, but the ending shit was shit. So. I, I liked, all right, I, other than the Nemesis system, because that seems to be everything, like, all the time, like, that's all that people point out, generally. But I would say, removing that, I really liked the voice acting. I really think the voice acting in that game was generally, for a video game, really good. Uh, Troy Baker was pretty damn amazing. Um, I think that the... Uh, I haven't, like... A lot of people been, that have played single-player games get annoyed of this stuff, but I really like the little collectibles that you get around the world because they actually have... You actually build this image that has a story, and that's stuff that when I read Tolkien, like, I've read pretty much all of the books, 
So I, I, you get to get these like direct analogies, and it's so cool. And the Newman was something that I've always wanted to see, just visually to imagine it, and and it was so cool to see that all that stuff. Uh, the Black Gate, how it looked before uh, shit got down. I think that was awesome. Uh, I did not enjoy the quick time events. So like the final boss battle was the, it was just terrible. Like you didn't really fight a boss. You just pressed a bunch of buttons, and you didn't even use your joystick. Uh, it was it was pretty bad, but I like the fact that it gave you so much freedom to. Uh, I mean, this is kind of part of the nemesis system, but not exactly. The fact that you could k- gather uh, war bands and then decide what you want to attack. So even after the game's over, you can decide like what conflicts you want to create and how you want to like raise another uh, enemy's level really high up intentionally, just so you can kill him and get a high high level rune. I think that was really cool, but. I is think that I think that game much? had a lot of replayability. So definitely not worth the sixty dollars. I my think opinion. it was worth the sixty dollars. Close, but closer, closer, closer than any other game, AAA game that I've played. I'd say that that was definitely closer to the sixty dollars because sixty dollars is a lot of money. Think about all the games that you get from less than mm-hmm. that that have so much replayability. I mean, think of a simple portable game for your Nintendo 3DS. I'm a huge Nintendo guy. Pokemon. Think about that. It's a thirty-five dollar game. Think about look how much content that okay. has. Yeah, my friends put like a thousand hours into Pokemon. He has every single one that they yeah. ever made ever. <laughs> you guys are Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, Pokemon, like uh, I'm so sick of Pokemon. Yeah. Think about too. the Legend of Zelda. Like that's a game that's I'm also generally sick forty of, like, bucks. Legend of Zelda. <laughs> yeah. All right, like, like well, Nintendo's I'm like, not. oh, here's a new system, and then I'm just gonna. Make the same fucking games, but with new graphics. Oh, well, you know, but Nintendo is pretty much the only company this last year that didn't completely bomb. Like well, in I mean, the beginning, how many, how many they had a really they bad really start. Said, how many games did they really actually release? They didn't release many, but all the games that they released were quality games, at least, right? They all, they all <laughs> like work. Mario Kart I mean, was they, a they solid all game, worked, but they're, it's the they same all worked shit when they every came time. Out. Yeah. So it's like how, I mean, how hard is it to make the same game for a new console to have it to work? I mean, clearly it, th- that didn't work with the Mass Effect collection, well, but still. Well, you could say that same thing for all of the other AAA title, AAA companies that make the same games, like Assassin's yeah, Creed, I mean, and, and every single one of them is progressively worse, whereas with Nintendo, at least, every single I one they release... Sure, it's the same it's the same franchise, but at least it's just, better. It adds on to some mechanics. Just, They're not afraid to innovate by creating new joysticks and new controllers that actually work differently than just the standard Xbox, PlayStation one, right? Yeah. Sorry, that yeah, was long. That was a long rant, but don't you agree? That's kind of. I see. I see. I see issue with with both, but I think Nintendo's at least. I mean, Nintendo's. You know, yeah, I mean, they're releasing stuff. That Every time work, they release a game, yeah, it works. And it's like, well, this is for because because the people. It's also the because who they're, are playing they're lagging those. behind, kind of. <laughs> I mean, it's true, but their they demographic. Didn't, they didn't have HD been, games until the week the U came out. It's like, yeah. what the hell? Yeah. Where have you been? But at least those the, those new HD games are not capped at 30 FPS right now. So like all the other consoles, which are now falling behind for some well, it's reason. Not like there's not that many particles and shit in them either. You know, it's like, oh, here's well, Mario Kart with the like, rainbow I, in the in the in the sky. <laughs> like, at least like, see, I'd I'd rather have a game that has lower. Uh, I mean, what would you, you? I guess you could call that lower system requirements, uh, worse graphics in parentheses, uh, but. I'd rather have a game like that that looks kind of appealing. It isn't edgy and really just bad looking because of FPS and all these other things than a game like Assassin's Creed that, for some reason, like every single one of them, like haven't you guys noticed? Every single one of them is getting worse. Like oh, yeah. since Assassin's Creed, I put it to you. I put it to you. Black Flag. Black Flag looked amazing. Uh, a little bit. The graphics uh, were crazy. Black Flag was was not amazing. Black Flag had cool pirate ship moments, and then that was it. I put it to yeah, you that like Assassin's what... Creed is the worst game franchise that has ever existed ever, and I think that needs to stop. And I hate it. And I hate everybody who plays it. And they need to stop buying because <laughs> they're just contributing to the Ubisoft machine. And I think I don't know. I really, it's true though. I really hate those games. Like if I could eliminate any one franchise, it would be that one. It's it's not even like I mean the franchise itself. I think it has those potential games in terms of story. Are such garbage, in terms of though. story. But the story, like, if you think about the whole, like, story that started back in, in the first and second game, if they went with that story of, 
of kind of having like th- these connected characters that all have to share the same genes and all that. That's really cool. Like when you explain to somebody how that game works, mm-hmm. what the whole what's that machine called that they use? The Animus. Animus. Like, and how that works with that one character who's tied to all of these different versions of him throughout time or ancestors. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. But for some reason, like with Black Flag and before that, even even before that, with the Assassin's Creed 3, right? The one with the Native American one. Like, they just like, it just made it really weird. It just disconnected. Like, I don't think that the new Ass- Assassin's Creed have anything to do with the old ones in any way. Like, they don't even feel the same game anymore. They're just stamping them out, too. It's like, oh, it's the same thing. It's a formula. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got the Call of Duty annoying. effect. It feels like the same yeah. game in terms of gameplay, but in terms of story, it has nothing. Yeah, it's like the Call of Duty effect, actually. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Whereas Nintendo, right, just going back on that one last time with Nintendo, sure, they release the same franchise. Like, they continue their storylines for the different games, but at least, like, they're very different. Like, you think about The Legend of Zelda wind waker and then you think of the 2d adventures of zelda, the zelda games and then you think of something like uh the 3d like the nintendo 3ds game where you had to basically use the um uh, like change the game from a 3d game to a 2d game and then back and out again like this is really cool stuff like the games might be the same franchise the same story but they all look very different yeah. like they they t- they have a very different they have different mechanics. They're not just and now the new clones one. of the other ones. Just literally just exactly. like stamp, stamp, stamp. Except for Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask is pretty much the same as Ocarina of Time, but, you know, that's... Yeah. They still released it. At least re- they released it three or four years after the original one came out, so it's not like every year. It was it was way more, like, different, though. They added so much new stuff, and it was like... It's one thing to, to make, like, a game back-to-back that's, like, the same, or to make a sequel... Or a prequel or something, but when you have like fourteen Assassin's Creed games and they're all kind of trash and they just you never innovate necessarily, it's that same repetitive. Uh, go here, kill this guy. Go here, climb this tower so you can unlock this new area. And then oh, they do these little missions. And it's just. Uh, yeah, I really think but, that's uh, the worst. Not to not to give not to basically uh, flaunt Nintendo too much though. Did you guys hear about the new YouTube uh, thing that they're doing? Nope. Uh, Nintendo so. basically before, if you made a video uh, Nintendo game uh, of a Nintendo game, uh, YouTube gets as usual they get forty percent of your uh, ad revenue, and then the other sixty percent went to Nintendo. So basically, that's why a lot of people were discouraged to make uh, Nintendo videos because they had this terrible. I like, this is like that's like the bad side of Nintendo when you look at stuff like that. And now this year they've changed it, so now they get uh, Nintendo gets eighteen percent, uh, YouTube gets forty percent, and I think what's left then for you basically thirty two percent. No, less than that. Eighteen. Uh, yeah, like thirty eight percent. What thirty? I forgot the numbers that you said. So 18 plus 40, right? Yeah, 18 plus 40, 58. So all that's left is 42% for you, which people are now like, people are pretty much kind of uh, divided because some are saying that's good because it's better than before. But at the same time, it's not because you should, you're still not getting the majority of the money that you actually earn by making this video. Like you're advertising their game for free in the first place. Yeah. And they, 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 and then, they, the only argument I can make with, with, companies taking money from youtube is if it's a let's play or something like that and there's a very story driven game like if you let's play wolf among us or those kind of like story games then there's no reason to you know if you watch a let's play of it there's no reason to buy it so i can understand why they would want to take but yeah you can't detract from the experience of playing a nintendo game by watching it on youtube because most then imagine like monetizing mario kart that makes no sense that makes zero sense the only thing that you could get from a Mario Kart video would be, oh, it looks fun, let me go buy it. As opposed to, well, yeah. I've seen everything there is to see. I, I've experienced that game. Like, no. <laughs> Imagine monetizing. I mean, they do that, but how stupid does it sound monetizing Super Smash Brothers? That's like a competitive game. Like, I don't know. What do you mean? Uh, I mean, like, they also get, they also take your ad revenue for all the Super Smash videos you make. Yeah. Because it's a Nintendo game. Well, I mean, what's the difference between that and any other fighting game? Well, I mean, I'm saying it makes more sense for them for monetizing a Zelda game because it's a story game that once you beat, there's no really... I mean, 
Unless it has, like, some specific Zelda games have more replayability than others, but overall, if it's a story game, a single-player game especially, you'd really, like, once you watch it, you kind of get discouraged to buy it afterwards. So that makes sense why they would want to put a tax on that so that, you know, people don't make as many Let's Plays. But if it's a competitive game, like, let's say, StarCraft or Dota, imagine, like, having Dota monetize every time you make a video. That wouldn't make any sense. No. Because the company's right? not doing anything to make that, you know? You're not detracting from that company yeah, by making it. Yeah, like, people would still want to buy Dota, I mean, download Dota to play it because they see, oh, this game is awesome, I need to play it, and it's going to be a different experience every time, so there's no... It makes no sense for them uh, to monetize if anything, that, it's know? a benefit because yeah. I rarely... I pretty much will never buy a game or even download a game. It's free. Like, it's got to that point. I'm like, that. I don't have the hard drive space to not... Yeah. watch like five videos on this before I decide if it's going to be something that I even waste my time with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So That's where streaming plays a big part is having, like ha- watching a player, you don't even have, I mean, you don't have to watch a famous streamer. Uh, just watch any stream to know if a game is going to be good or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really. Yeah, to watch it being played right in front of you is pr- pretty nice. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Because a lot of YouTubers, like, if they make like a quick or like cut up review, they'll just kind of show you what they think is good, so you don't get to see the downtime and yeah, what's, what's they show you the funny parts. Yeah. and because it's all about the views, right? If you make a boring video, nobody is gonna watch it. They want to have a funny video, so whereas Twitch, Twitch is not like that really. Because I mean, yeah, you want to have the funniest stream that you can, but that doesn't necessarily like you can't force that. That just comes naturally. Right? I mean, unless you're funny, yeah, you're funny, but that's all you can do. Like, you don't have that much control over what uh, the game itself. Like, if you get stuck on some con- uh, settings in the beginning of the game, you're going to have to fight through that on live on your stream while you're going through it. Whereas if you're uh, making a YouTube video, you can just, you know, skip that part and go back to the gameplay, right? You know, the perfect example of why you should watch, like, what was the name of that game? It was another terrible survival game that nobody played came out like the end of last year stomping lands no it wasn't dying light it was unturned that's actually a good game though no it was like supposed to be some like return to form of resident evil uh oh i know what you're thinking about uh it's the demon game instead of zombies you had demons uh, no, no, you were like stuck in this asylum or whatever, and this big dude with a hook chased you around. You had to like hide. Oh, it was kind of like oh, randomly no. generated too, so I think it wouldn't be the same every time. Amnesia? Wait, no, that's not Amnesia. I uh, see, it was so bad that you can't, like, nobody even. Rem- and it was a big AAA release and it was hyped all to shit. But in that game, like, if you were to just watch pieces of it on YouTube, it would look really fun. But if you were to watch somebody play it on Twitch, you would immediately recognize how shit that it was. Oh, are you talking about the game that Jessica Chobot made? Uh, where it's basically like it's incorporated with chat, so whenever chat types no, something, no. like it goes into the game. See, this is like another one of those AAA games that was hyped to shit, and everybody was excited. Now nobody can remember even what it was. <laughs> it's so funny because it's like this game was big AAA, hyped to hell. Like for years, they were talking. Do you guys about remember it. this? It was made. All? It was made by like the original Resident Evil guy. What is and this? it's some survival horror game, no. like the Evil Within. There you go. Oh, that's that's it. Yeah, that's it. The brain. That because you said the chainsaw guy, and that I'm like I remember that. And that yeah, 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 yeah. The Evil Within. Oh god, that game. The final boss fight was a dude with a spoiler, uh, a dude with a bazooka firing at a brain. That's it's like it's weird. just the most, and he was stabbed through the stomach. So he was kept falling down the spear with every second, and he was able to repeat like repeatedly shoot from a bazooka towards a, at a brain while in midair. <laughs> Such a silly game, but if you were to oh, watch God. pieces of that on YouTube, it would actually look kind of fun. But if you were to watch a uh, uh, like like Twitch like a streamer, you yeah. would instantly recognize that it was just not fun because you're replaying yeah. the same places over and over. And just, you can't. There's no like other way around certain puzzles and like there's a guy chasing you most of the time and you better hide yeah oh man yeah yeah and you saw it in that uh, letterbox too it was only rendering like three quarters of your screen which was just trash <laughs> but I think it's important what? then going back to that whole thing 
I don't think they should take money from YouTubers unless it's they're just spoiling the whole story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely. But that, like, that implies also that there has to be a case-by-case scenario for a game where, like, you have to look at the video whether it's a Let's Play or not. And that might be a little bit harder to do with, uh, with uh, automated, like, mm-hmm. uh, YouTube systems. You have to have an actual person checking through the video, you know what I mean? Which is totally impossible. So. Yeah, totally, so. But... Yeah, uh, I think we're just about at uh, an hour and 20 minutes, maybe. Uh, hour we started and 30. The, well, that's when we started the Skype call, but we started the actual podcast a little bit before that. So I think we're pretty much, uh, we pretty much covered most of the topics. Uh, if you guys have anything else, maybe for 2015, that you're hoping for, other than uh, the, the games that we mentioned earlier. Good games. That's it. Games. Yeah. Just overall. No genre in specific, nope, just good just games. Good yeah. games. I'd love to be surprised by something to actually have a game come out and be as good as like it's being hyped to be. What company are you guys? What what about companies? You don't care about companies, but maybe I guess you could say like, what company do you really want to make a good game this year? A triple A, like in the sense of a triple A company or an indie game? What do you want? I don't. I don't think it matters. It's basically just comes down to yeah. I mean, there could be a loyalty when it comes to gaming. I just. Want a game to be good? Yeah. I'm looking for Capcom mm. to to come out this year and and finally give us Planet Side Online 2 North America, Monster Hunter Online or the Cry Engine is supposed oh, to yeah. come out in North America. So that's what I'm looking forward to this year. It's finally getting us like Capcom. I don't think now Planet Star or excuse me, Fantasy Star is uh, Sega, but it's that same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <sighs> basically, better, better Western ports. Yeah, kind of. Or thing. any. Any Western right. port at all. <laughs> so we have good games in general, and th- no preference. Uh, uh, Western ports and good games in general, also from Freakish. Uh, I'd say I really want... I'm looking forward to the Guild Wars 2 <laughs> expansion. All right, I'm going to say that. I have to say it at least in the podcast. So, wasn't, I'm going to mention Guild Wars. That, that wasn't a surprise. But, but <laughs> I will also say that in general, I, yeah, I want good games, but I do really want a good... MMO that's not World of Warcraft. I want the next big sandbox MMO, not a theme park. I want a sandbox MMO that players can decide what to do. And I've done like two big 30-minute videos rants about this, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. But I want something like that, and I hope we get it sometime soon. That would be nice. Yep. Yeah. But uh, with that, uh, I think we're going to end. Thank you guys for being here, talking for the last hour and a half. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're gonna pretty much be doing this thing, uh, mainly, uh, mostly every week, uh, and, uh, we'll see how it goes, we'll just go with the flow, pretty casual format, and, uh, essentially, right now, the, the, we're going to aim for, to upload the actual video throughout the week, this is being recorded on a Saturday, for everybody that's watching, on Saturday, the 31st of January, last day of the month. Um, but in general, we're going to see when actually what the schedule for this thing is going to be like uh, when they're going to be getting uploaded. We're still going to be recording on the same day, just when in the week we're going to upload it. But yeah, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next podcast. Later. Bye. Later. Bye. Beep boop.